Kia ora. Thanks for checking out this guide to conversations for change. A like minds like mine rethink resource for youth. I'm Cherie. And I'm Kate, and we're your hosts for these videos. These vids will give you some background to help you feel confident to run the resource. But first a bit about us. I'm the Mental Health Promotion Lead at Mind and Body Consultants and a counsellor. I grew up in Rotorua and I have Pākehā and Dutch heritage, as well as whakapapa connections with Tūhoi. I'm an actress, writer and presenter and I'm a suicide prevention educator. I've been blessed with both the Taha Māori and Taha Pacifica whakapapa and I was born and raised in beautiful Tamaki Makoto. We're so glad you're interested in using Conversations for Change with your group. We also know that facilitating in the mental health area might feel challenging. These videos are going to take you through some basics and we want to reassure you the exercises have been written to keep conversations safe. Each activity comes with a comprehensive guide, so you don't have to be a mental health worker or a counsellor to run them. And don't worry, you don't need to remember everything that we say. But you can download the summary notes for these videos from the website. So why was this resource created? Well, research tells us that stigma and discrimination for those with experience of mental distress is a major issue with a huge social cost. The Like Minds Like Mind project, which this resource is part of, exists to help end discrimination related to mental health. Stigma leads to discrimination. Stigma and discrimination can stop people from feeling part of their community and feeling good about themselves. It can get in the way of their recovery, preventing them from seeking treatment, maintaining wellness and getting support. When people don't feel supported to talk about issues at an early stage, it affects us individually, in our families and as a society. Conversations for Change encourages youth to think critically about some ideas around mental health. By doing so, we believe that they will be able to be open to those around them who might have been experiencing mental distress. And if they or their whanau have stuff going on, hopefully they're going to be able to talk about it and get help earlier. Some of those watching may want to know why we use the term mental distress rather than mental illness. Great question. For many people, given a mental health diagnosis, if we describe their experiences as illness... Like a cold that your body needs to fight or a disease that you need to be cured of... Well, it doesn't acknowledge the way these experiences can be part of the package of being human. Yeah, mental distress is about things that are distressing. To meet criteria for a mental illness, it means a doctor has assessed you as having a certain number of symptoms in a diagnostic list. Using the term distress means we can be more inclusive of a wider range of issues and experiences, whether or not people have been given a diagnosis. One example of that might be with young people and eating issues. Many young people, more frequently our young women, have significant issues with food and how they feel about their body. This can really affect their well-being in life, but they may not have enough symptoms to be diagnosed with an eating disorder. Using mental distress as a term makes sure that we're including their experiences real and valid and worthy of support. Also, people's symptoms arise in a context connected to their experiences, social world, family and history. There's a great deal of research that says trauma and distressing experiences often occur before someone starts struggling. Mental distress as a term helps acknowledge this. Think about a person in an abusive environment. It is so normal that they experience symptoms like anxiety, low mood and even panic if they're in an ongoing stressful situation. Now we're going to talk you through some of the key messages when addressing mental health stigma and discrimination and they're also downloadable on the Rethink website. Did you know that the Mental Health Survey, Te Rao Hinenaro, established that 46% of New Zealanders will experience a mental health condition in their lifetime? Not only that, but one in four, that's 25% of people, are experiencing symptoms that could be diagnosed as a mental health condition right now. Actually, the reason that I'm involved in this project is that I have my own experience of mental distress. As a young adult, I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety and this later became bipolar 2 disorder. We actually both have lived experience in this area. I was 14 when I first began to really struggle and 16 when I was referred to community mental health. Research tells us that people being open about their experience in this area is really important in terms of challenging stigma. And if you'd like to be open about having your own experience of mental distress as part of facilitating conversations for change, 
we'll talk more about this in video three. I think one of the reasons why this resource is so important is that many people who experience mental health conditions, around half, will first see signs of difficulties, like you did, by the age of 14. Conversations for Change provides an opportunity for youth to talk openly about mental health. They can learn about where to get help and be better able to support and include friends and family. It tells young people that their attitudes and behaviours matter. So back to the messages. Message three is that the way people experience mental distress, well, it really varies. Yeah, even for people with the same diagnosis or taking the same medication, their experiences can be so different. They've lived different lives, they have different stresses, and they have different supports. If we think someone's diagnosis tells us all we need to know, it can really shut us down from listening. We know you're going to have a look at the further reading recommended on the website. If you're short on time, it's useful to do the reading around any of these messages that might feel particularly new or challenging for you. This next message, that there is no one explanation for why people experience mental distress, is interesting. Yeah, we're often given a simplified message that mental illness is the result of a chemical imbalance. And there's actually limited evidence for this, particularly in the area of depression. When we reduce these causes of mental distress down to chemical imbalance, it makes sense that people think, well, pills are what's needed. And yeah, medication might always be needed. If instead, as research suggests, all of the causes listed can and do interact with each other. And mental distress is seen as contributed to by a whole host of things. Well, then maybe a person can make changes in their environment to help their situation or understand their situation in a different way. Whether or not they find medication helpful. The whole area of mental health can be a complex and fascinating one, but you don't need to know a whole lot about diagnoses and treatments to facilitate this resource. What you do need is to be a warm and capable facilitator and on board with these key messages. Like this one. People with mental distress are more likely to be victims than perpetrators of violent crimes. If you only paid attention to news headlines or what has been depicted in Hollywood movies, you wouldn't believe this message to be true. Dangerousness is a stigma that can be so damaging. It can really contribute to social exclusion. There's a lot of interesting reading and research online about this area if you're interested. I love message six. The message that most people recover is really important. Hearing this would have really given me some hope as a young person, especially combined with the message that mental illness is common. Aye. I think it makes it less scary for someone to go and get some support. People can recover and live great lives. Our young people are learning so much and having some pretty adult experiences. And when mental health issues are on top of these, it can be pretty overwhelming. I have mental health issues that still come up. And I think I'm living a pretty great life. <laughs> Me too. Which leads us to the behaviour change part of the message. Attitudes and behaviour need to change to reduce stigma and discrimination and promote social inclusion. That's what Conversations for Change is all about, providing activities to help young people think critically about mental health stigma so that they can be part of the change in their families and communities. Video 2 is going to talk about challenging conversations that might arise when you're facilitating, so check it out. We're so glad to have you as part of the team. Ka kite anō. Ka kite.